gentlemen, my name is Dr. John Belkowitz and you're here today to do Q&A Wednesday! <sighs> Takes a lot of energy to do that. Uh, we got a, a message from El Khalil. El Khalil, thank you very much. Ding! It's actually a set of two questions. El Khalil never just asks one question. And they're never easy questions. Thank you, El Khalil. Hi, Mrs. Haley. Such a nice gentleman. He's such a gentleman. I have two main questions about Colotosilica. One, ding! Ah, I'm done doing the dings for this. That's it, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. How Colotosilica enhances alkali activated material or geopolymers, and what's the optimum portion should we add to these materials? Let me, let me, let me start off by answering the second question. I hope that's fair, of the first question. The second question of the first question? It all depends. It all depends with the type of materials you're using, the chemistry of those materials, and the performance features enhancements that you're looking for. So as, as much as I want to give you this is what you should use, I'd rather point you in the direction of what other people have done. Uh, and when it comes to alkali activated or, or geopolymers, I mean with geopolymers, you're still looking for an alumina silica polycondensation so if you can dial in the type of silica that you're pulling, putting in there, or even put this combination of luminous silica, we've seen benefits out of it. And you know the same densification, reduction in percolation, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so going back to the first question is, of course, we see enhancements. Uh, there's works that, work that we've done with government agencies. There's uh, work that we've done with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, it was... You know, how to create, uh, do you remember what, it, what that was? How to create disaster relief homes from garbage. Um, and all that data is, is online where we're using a geopolymer concept in combination with uh, colloidal silica and I think some alkali activated material uh, to, to create this, this geopolymer composite that we were going after. And that's online for free. Uh, but there's a lot uh, of other groups, academic arena, that have done a lot of work with colloidal silica as well as geopolymers and that, that polycondensation concept. So, next question. How does colloidal silica enhance CSA cements when we have high yield, I can't say that, that product um, content? Can colloidal silica increase the dissolution rate of C2S compared to C3S dissolution? So, uh, dicalcium versus tricalcium. And the reason why I included those together is because any time we put a nanoparticle around something that goes through a dissolution process, that nanoparticle, just because it is a nanoparticle, it does kick off something called heterogeneous nucleation, where it is a controlled small particle with a much smaller force field on it, and because of that, it will allow other things to either grow on the surface or allow that dissolution rate to increase. Um, there's some great work done by uh, Jamal Jayalapan out of uh, Georgia Tech, I think it was back in somewhere between 2004, 2006, I might not be totally correct on that, but he was looking at uh, tricalcium and dicalcium silicate using um, nano TiO2, different sizes of nano TiO2 and different dosages, and looking at differential thermal gra grammarimetry, or no, no, um, uh, calorimetry he was looking at. So, and basically what he saw is the smaller particle and the more smaller particle that he put in, he got bigger kicks, uh, uh, heat kicking off because he was increasing that dissolution rate and getting more bang out of that cementitious composite. Uh, Bjorn Bjornstrom did the same thing in 2003, 2004 with his work using 3 to 5 nanometer colloidal silica to 15% solids looking at uh, A light and B light or our tricalcium silicate and, and dicalcium silicate and found the same thing. And there is been, has been a plenty of work with carbon nanotubes, whether they're made out of carbon or aluminum nanotubes or silicon nanotubes that show that that smaller particle kicks off that, you know, the, the kinetics of cement hydration or that in, in increased rate of dissolution, of course, the rate of hydration that follows that. And I think the last reference that I can point you to would be uh, Land um, and his work that was done back in 2012 on the instantaneous pozzolanic uh, effect of nanosilica sized particles and how uh, that heterogeneous nucleation in combination with that pozzolanic reaction effect create this what he called a calcium silicate hydrate seeding effect. So great papers, great questions. Thanks a bunch. I'm already over time. Go Conquer!
Pirasfo!